Hello, greetings to everyone. It's me, Vijay Kumar Ranavhat from Tanahu. Uh, I am a young Philly scholar of Nepal Open University. Uh, today, I am going to present on a topic translation aesthetics as a part of assignment of translation uh, studies. Uh, translation aesthetics uh, overall in overall covers uh, creative production and the translators linguistic and literary creativity. However, uh, the first one that is a uh, creative production will be dealt by one of my colleagues. So today I am going to discuss on a topic the translators linguistic and literary creativity. It further includes two subtopics. Uh, they are the classic translation and the translation traditions. Uh, so let's move towards the translators linguistic and literary creativity the issue of originality versus reproductive nature of translation raises three further questions yeah now when we talk about the original version of the translation and reproductive version of the translation they are two distinct things however they are related to uh, the translations because uh, originality has to do with classical tradition or originality has to do with classical or normative nature of translation and reproductive is more related with the producing reproduction of the several forms of the uh, translations of the same work. This is the thing. So the questions, the issues related to the questions or uh, some issues related to the main issue are the first one. The potential of so-called classic or normative translation. How much it is feasible? How can it do? How much can it do? Shouldn't we focus on the reproductive type of uh, uh, translation? This is also talk. Uh, this is also talk today. So the second one is the translator's autonomy in relation to the evolution of translation practice in target culture. Here. Three things. One, translator's autonomy will be there and it is in relation to the evolution of the translation practice, what's going on today and uh, it is more related to the target culture. And third one is translator's autonomy in relation to the target language. Translator's autonomy will be here. Uh, it's uh, obviously this is related to target language. So, uh, uh, we saw that the first one is related with the classic or normative nature of translation and the second and third point are related to the target culture and reproductive form. Let's say we can say somehow related to the reproductive nature of translation. So let's move towards uh, the classic translation. The categorization of translation is one of the reproductive arts entails more than a theoretical considerations. So translation is an art. This is not only simply theory. This is not only uh, not only simply the science. This is an art. So it has some practical consequences. And there are some debatable issues in it. The most debatable issue is whether there can be an idle translation or uh, there will be the existence of several simultaneous translations of the same work. This is the thing. So, uh, when we emphasize on the greater creative co contribution of the translators, obviously there comes the notion of reproductive version or several simultaneous uh, translation of the same work. Obviously. Uh, the idea of classic or uh, Standard interpretation is probably most relevant in music. However, it may not be equally relevant in theater performance. It shows that we are between the poles, in between the poles of the controversial issue, that is music in theater. Here, music more symbolizes on the classical version of the translation or uh, let's say normative nature of the translation and theater is more related to the reproductive nation, nature of the translation. 
So again, one can more appropriately uh, uh, speak of a period or classic translation in prose, whereas translator's creative contribution is le less permanent. In, whereas in poetry, translation is more distinctive poetic work in its own right. Uh, two parallel translations cannot be denied right to coexist. Yeah, the same work, the same work can be done by two other translators and they can come uh, with uh, two different works and we cannot deny them because they have followed certain procedures that a particular translator should follow. They have followed the, those procedures. They have done that rigorously. Then isn't it the acceptable one? Or it will be more suitable than the traditional one. This is the issue. Every new, furthermore, they have told that every new interpretation is a fresh response. Because new interpretation or new translation will be based on the basis of the contemporary national, cultural, political scene. This is the thing. So translators express their ideological position more or less clearly in uh, every translation. They have certain ideology and they express their ideological position in translations, in their works. Very often, within one generation of the translators and readers, one of the several translators of the foreign uh, classical writer becomes established. And so, uh, it will be injustice on the part of a whole generation if we started to impose a particular version of the translation. Because one of the several translators of the foreign classical writer may, may come uh, over there, may be there. This tendency is particularly common among the drama translators because selection of the translations is progressively refined by the rep repeat productions in the continuity of theoretical practices because there should be the progressive nature of the things, tasks, production, reproduction, again reproduction before finalizing the tax. Finalizing the tax. There might be reproduction of many versions. So it talks about it. And it is uh, not only the best, but also the most versatile translation. Interpretive or reproductive uh, nature of translation is not only the best, it is also the most versatile translation that has a chance to become a classic translation because two clear cut concepts and basic suitability of translation for a particular type of production. Well, when we are talking about the production and reproduction, and again, if we started to follow uh, one particular or classical translation restrict, uh, being restricted, again, it will be injustice. Again, it doesn't allow for the reproduction or for, the, for more interpretation of the translation, translation notes. So, this is the thing. It means to say that, so, uh, reproductive nature of translation should be besides. However, there is another uh, logic here. Uh, it is said that even the classic translation retains its validity uh, only within a specific linguistic and culturally homogeneous epoch as long as it is appropriate in terms of language and interpretation for that period. Most importantly, the more rapidly the language changes, the sooner the translations become dated. So when there will be the change in language, obviously there will be change in translation also. Finally, it also advocates uh, the reproductive nature of translation itself. Translation tradition now, Unlikely creative acts by original artists, reproductive activity is repetitive. Yeah. Reproductive type of activity will be repetitive one. And so, in case of more frequently translated major works, an interpretive uh, tradition becomes established. Interpretive tradition becomes established. Interestingly, it is often in the matters of rhyme that the two translations arrive independently at the same solutions. Yeah same solutions. Evidently, because of the availability of the rhyming peers, expressing the meaning of the source is more limited than the scope for the stylistic variation. In the case of some uh, classical authors, uh, they even served a substitute for missing a domestic translation tradition. It also happens. Uh, when we talk about uh, it, in general, uh, one 
now or no one let's say or in general one can say that a new reproduction is an artistic act only there are two conditions one the translation as a whole is the work of subsequent translator yeah one he has done he or she has done and later on it has come and not next one if it is not a plagiarism if there is the cases of plagiarism plagiarism of same version then it doesn't work uh, plagiarism are much more common in translation practices and more difficult to identify than the original literature than in original literature it's also it's also possible because now uh, we can easily find out whether it has become or not in original translation the broader the the broader the range of possible alternative translations the easier it is to uncover plagiarism it is the easiest in verse translation or in literature where language and historical conditioning of the text are so specific that the translator is obliged to seek the original translation solutions in terms of their origin there are two types of translation plagiarism one is done by untalented translator next one is done by talented translator simply speaking it means to say that those people who don't ha don't have idea may also uh, commit the plagiarism because um, or for the purpose of economic reason or out of the ambition and even the talented writers translators uh, sometimes do uh, the case of plagiarism because they simply don't consider translation is a genuine form of art to be treated with respect so this comes the problem um, to are the both novice translator also an expert translator also or let's let's not say expert expert translators for the renowned figure also sometimes because be, becoming a good translator and being great person in a particular language might be sometimes different things different things those who give you emphasis in the translation those who work a lot in the translation can do better can do better yeah identical words are distributed in the same places in the bars and mm, it is not a case of coincidence or similarity of detail arising out of the boring certain expressions the way translators solve the most difficult problem that of rhyme is particularly conclusive evidence of plagiarism occasionally a translators themselves abandon any attempt to make a creative contribution to the final shape of the translate, translated work. Uh, in so far, the earlier solution is acceptable, the newer version is not significantly better. It is pointless and damaging to deviate them, deviate from it, because this would uh, destabilize the established culture of facts. And sometimes, most importantly, sometimes tradition proves to be so powerful that a translator is powerless to oppose it. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, particularly we discuss about two things here under translation ethics. One is working on the translation following by uh, the uh, traditional or let's say classical translation. It, still, it has been told here. And next one is uh, translation will be or translatory oaks or the oaks of translation can be reproduced and different versions also of the same work might be there. However, it has been concluded with the thing that sometimes tradition proves to be so powerful. Sometimes tradition will be powerful in such a way that even if translator wants to oppose it, he or she cannot oppose because he or she will be powerless. So, uh, I think there should be the balance between it, balance between it on the basis of the on the basis of the different genre of genres, genres, and we, we should we translators should translate in the same way or accordingly. Uh, this is the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you so much.